How many of you know that God's got something better in store for you? Come on, choir. God has so many great things in store for you. Can't you see? Many great things in store for you. God has so many great things in store for you. Can't you see? Many great things in store for you. God has so many great things in store for you. Can't you see? everyone. I am so glad that you decided to be with us again this morning. We've been separated for 10 weeks, but God has truly been with us and we're able to connect again. Thank you, Lord. Matter of fact, hold your hands up and say, thank you, Lord. Give God a praise because he is worthy of all the praise. This morning, I would like to bring before you uh, the title of my message, which is My Prayer for You. And this morning, I hope as we come through it that you will get something out of this message to help you through the week. Now we're going to turn to our scripture for this morning, Philippians 
chapter 1, 1 to 11. And we will begin to read at this time. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints of Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul's prayer for the Philippians. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you are making requests with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record. How greatly I long after you in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may bound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ until the glory and praise of God. My text will be taken from verses 3 and 4. The beginning of Paul's prayer for the Philippians. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy. Philippians 1, 3 to 11 is Paul's expression of thanks and gratitude for the believers of Philippi. Not only have they been generous in their support of Paul, they have been faithful even when he was imprisoned. Paul claims to thank God for these Christians in all of his prayers. At the same time, Paul has high hopes that the church of Philippi will continue to mature and strengthen their relationship with Christ. The activity of prayer for another is one of the highest Christian services possible. A significant verse of scripture is found in 1 Samuel 12, 23. When the old prophet Samuel said to the people of Israel, Moreover, as for me, God forbid, that I should sin against the Lord and ceasing to pray for you. This was his Pharaoh speech to the people. He had been both a prophet and a judge, but the people had now chosen a king. As he was stepping down, he showed his continued concern for them. The Apostle Paul showed this to be his heart also in the letter to the Philippians. He begins this letter with a prayer that begins with gratitude and then moves to petition. His petition starts in verse 9. First, he prayed for an abundance of love. Paul prayed in verse 9 that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. Although the church of Philippi was a loving church, Paul desired they continue to grow in love for one another. He wanted their love to abound or overflow. 
thank God for something of which there is enough. In fact, there is an abundance of love. However, for love to abound more and more, there was a need for them first to have correct knowledge of one another and of the Lord. Secondly, Paul desired they grow in love in all judgment or perception, not only by the senses, but by the intellect, connection, discernment, and a moral discernment in ethical matters. When times of discretion and judgment were necessary, Paul desired that they would abound in their outstanding love toward one another as the standard. Likewise, my prayer for you is for abundance of love, a love with knowledge, because love without knowledge can be dangerous. It must also be love with discernment and with good judgment. His second petition was for growth in character. Let's look again at verse 10. Here the apostle Paul says that ye may approve things that are excellent. Those who grow in love will be morally pure. Paul will again mention purity in Philippians 4.8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Paul also notes his goal for the Philippian believers to be blameless in Philippians 2.15. Growth in character will include the ability to tell right from wrong. Paul considered himself blameless in the eyes of the law, though it was only Christ who could make him blameless before the Lord, and only Christ can make you blameless before the Lord. My prayer for you is for growth in character. Paul's last petition is found in verse 11. Paul prays that the believers would be filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. These fruits are those which righteousness in the heart produces. The fruits or results will be seen in your life. And those fruits are honesty, truth, love, kindness, meekness, goodness. The apostle prayed that they might show abundantly by their lives that they were truly righteous, not self-righteous, but they had the righteousness that only Jesus can give. And according to Paul, the ultimate goal is that our manifestation of these fruits of righteousness will bring praise and glory to God. As Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. My prayer for you is to be filled with the fruits of righteousness. This is my prayer for you, for abundance of love, for growth in character, and to be filled with the fruits of righteousness. How are you doing in these essential things? The Spirit does not work in your life automatically. The gifts and fruits of the Spirit and God's power and anointing will be manifested in your life as you pray. While it is important to pray for the needs of others, those who are out of a job, sick, or facing difficult times, 
the most important prayers must to be to know the love of God so that the Spirit may operate through you to be able to offer prayers to others that are rooted in his priorities. Offer the prayer given in Philippians 1, 9 to 11 on behalf of yourself and others. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and all judgment, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Paul's prayer is the prayer of a pastor. The pastoral heart is displayed when the pastor prays for his people. Bishop Samuel Ellis, our pastor emeritus, remind me of the apostle Paul, how he prayed for our members constantly. I remember how no matter the time he went to bed, he would get up at 4 a.m. to pray. This was his early morning prayer time. He wanted us to live a lifestyle that would bring glory to God. But as Philippians 3, 9 states, that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, the gifts and fruit of the Spirit and God's power and anointing will be manifested in your life as you pray. As you pray for others, pray for abundance of love, for growth in character, and that they will be filled with the fruits of righteousness, all to the glory of God. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for the example of Apostle Paul and how he prayed for the church in Philippi. Help each of us to be doers of the word and not just hearers. Help us to remember to pray for others that they might have an abundance of love, growth in character, and be filled with the fruits of righteousness. All for your praise and glory. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray, amen. As I conclude this time of sharing, I want to encourage you to remember to continue to honor God with the giving of your tithes and offerings. As always, you can send your offering by U.S. Mail to our church address. First Pentecostal Holy Church, 324 Pusey Street, Chester, PA, 19013. You can also give online using PayPal. If you have a PayPal account, you can help us defer fees by doing a transfer from your account to ours, which is FPHC Chester at Verizon.net. If you don't have a PayPal account, you can still use this option by using the PayPal link on the Give page of our website, fphcchester.org. Finally, I invite you to join us for a time of prayer via conference call on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. The dial number is 646 558-8656. Meeting ID is 874-107-91588. Please be safe. Be encouraged until we meet again. And remember, to God be the glory.